Delighted to now welcome David Stockton. He is the CEO of the Great North Air Ambulance and he is my latest guest on Money Talks. David, great to have you here in the studio. What an incredible organisation that you are part of. Tell us about how it started. So thank you, first of all, for having us here. Basically, as, as you know, we, we're celebrating 20 years this week. So on Friday, it's our 20th anniversary. Um, so it was started off a um, gentleman called Graham Pickering, basically, and it was a, a very inspirational chap who's uh, decided that the region needed some support, basically. So 20 years ago, basically from his bedroom and, and uh, from his home, he helped to, to inspire people to, to be funding um, a Great North Ambulance, because as he said before in, in the intro, it is purely um, by the be benefit of our supporters, and, and whether they be corporate or, or private individuals who help us to, to do what we do. You do cover some of our great national parks, areas mm -hmm. of world-class scenery where... I've often walked as, tell a, everybody that as, as a lad with, <laughs> with my family, really amazing. But yeah. even, if, we should say, even in the spring and summer, these are serious mountains and hills right. and the weather can turn and people, even experienced hill walkers, can get into trouble quickly. Absolutely, yeah. A big part of what we do, especially on our Cumbria side, so we, so we have our, one of our air ambulances uh, stationed uh, near Penrith, uh, and that one is, is mainly to do that, that whole area that you're talking about, up to, up, uh, up to the Cumbrian area, around the Lake District, and into Northumberland, basically, in the hills. So you're right, we do sort of expect, uh, ex hope that people will, will turn up and, and basically be well equipped to do what they need to do. Now, you need the thick end of £7 million quid a year, oh, yeah. right, to turn over the pandemic was obviously difficult for you yep. uh, people by definition weren't out hill walking your finances took a turn you still had to maintain the helicopters even though they weren't being used extremely sophisticated uh, pieces of kit how many helicopters do you have and how serious are your is your financial predicament now david so we've got two operational helicopters every day so we operate 365 days a, a year amazing basically. all volunteers um, um, volunteers and, and, and staff, so we have a, yeah, a combination sure. of both. We have some, some paid crew, um, pilots, doctors, uh, paramedics and support team. But yes, we have, we have also a, t a team of volunteers that help us on that journey as well, basically. But no support from government, no support from taxpayers, all on charitable donations. All, all charitable donations. Um, so we, 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 we get help from um, corporate uh, businesses, basically, sure. so those who can afford to. And it's interesting, I was listening to your, to your article earlier on there, um, you know, energy companies such as oh, that, that uh, you know, so some, some healthy money out there. Now, I'm not one to advocate who should spend their money where, and mm. we're very grateful of any support we do get, but uh, if anybody is in that position where they could help us, we, we, we along with many other charities, will be very grateful for help. So the pandemic um, did its thing to your finances of, of, of the charity, and now, of course, a big part of your running cost is, is fuel, specialist yeah. aviation fuel for your helicopters, which yeah. of course has rocketed has. in price. I mean, are you seriously concerned about the future of the Great North Air Ambulance, given where you currently are? Well, I think it's, it's right to, to be aware of it and to be concerned. Um, we, we have had really generous support for all, all of that 20 years. Um, so I'm not sat here thinking we're going to fall over tomorrow, but we do do what we do by the grace of, of people's goodwill. So um, the costs themselves are one end, end, end for us, basically. So our, our increase in the cost, our fuel's gone up about three times, electric about five wow. times, I believe. Um, so they're, they're dark costs. Because you're not filling up at the local expensive. garage, are you? I mean, this no. is a serious kit that you're yeah, using. 25,000 litre Helicopter Bowser, fuel is, yeah, exactly. is very, very expensive. But I get the biggest problem for us is, is as people start to feel the squeeze and people feel that... that, that finances are tight, they have less money to, to be generous with, yeah, basically. Yeah. So that's our biggest, biggest worry, because even the, the savings and the costs, of course, they're, they're, they're adding uh, expenses to us, but our biggest ones, our supporters, we're not like a retailer where we can go and increase our prices yeah. or have a sale or whatever. Do you mean? We and here's the thing, it seems to me, you're right, as the squeeze comes in bigger, gives me no pleasure to say that, but clearly it's happening to anybody who's willing to look. It may be that people you know, do opt for the simpler, cheaper things in life for their recreation, like going for, you know, a lovely walk in the yeah. Yorkshire Dales or yeah. in Cumbria or in the Lake District or so on. So the demands on you may be even more at a time when your income from donations is being squeezed, David. Yeah, absolutely. It's one we're, we're very aware of, basically, going forward. So um, RTCs are our biggest area, cardiac arrest, which, again, all these things could affect you or I. There's, there's no, there's no um, saving for that. Like the same walking hills, climbing mountains... 
riding a bike, um, mm. going for horse riding. They're all activities which you know could need our, our yeah. intervention at some point. So we, we, we have a service which could be required by all of us. Just give a little shout out, seeing as we're here on national television, to your volunteers and your message to people who may be thinking about donating to you during these tough times. So, so for, from my point of view, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. And I think you'll find that from each and every member of our, of our team, basically, we are eternally grateful and, and often overwhelmed by the generosity of people in their time, their money. Um, we've got people um, leaving us um, do- benefits in, in their wills, based on legacy donations, which is a major part of our income um, and I can't tell you how, how grateful we are we, we read the, the, the letters every day of why people are donating to us we have uh, supporters um, we have um, family members of, of, of people that maybe we haven't been able to, to make a, a difference to but we've bought them time and they've come and tell us how grateful they are for that and also we have survivors come and see us and they tell us and, and basically that's what keeps us going basically when we know the impact we've had we, we know we, we've given somebody the best chance possible and we've got many many um, survivors out there who basically due to the effort of, of the team that are out there so um, that's a team basically which goes everybody from the volunteer mm. um, to the supporter to the operational guys the doctors the pilots the paramedics that they go and make the difference on, on the end there so it, it's a whole team effort and just in the last few seconds David of course your charity does great work but prevention and caution is even better than, than rescue just in a nutshell your message to people who are venturing out into some of our more remote areas beautiful as they are yeah. they can also be dangerous they can really be dangerous so, so please go, go prepared let people know where, where you're going have a plan B have, a, have an action plan basis to what you do from it but by all means if you need us make that call basically we'd be only too happy to help David Stockton you are the boss of the Great North Air Ambulance it's a pleasure to have you here in the studio